Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to cover a recap of the multi-head attention and its drawbacks that happen when you use it in incremental inference. And then we'll go over two variants of multi-head attention, the multi-query attention or MQA and the grouped query attention or GQA. However, before watching this video, please check out my other video on self-attention first if you are not familiar with how the attention mechanism works. I promise you that the information that I am going to present will make much more sense if you do that. To start with, let's quickly recap the multi-head attention which was proposed in 2017 in the Transformers paper entitled Attention is all you need. What happens in that paper is that for a given input, we generate H queries, H keys, and H values matrices where H is the number of heads in the attention mechanism. Now, in each head, we calculate the dot product between the query matrices Q and the key K matrices, the QK transpose. Then, we rescale the results by dividing with the square root of D, the dimension of the keys and queries embeddings, apply the softmax function, and multiply the results by the value matrix V. This is performed on each head, so we get H outputs that are concatenated to produce the final output. However, the multi-head attention has one major drawback when we perform incremental inference, namely that we need to repeatedly load these large keys and value matrices into the computational graph, and as a result, the memory bandwidth becomes the bottleneck in this part of the processing. The first approach for dealing with this memory bandwidth issue is called a multi-query attention, which was proposed in the paper Fast Transformer Decoding, One Right Head is All You Need. Similar to the multi-head attention, we still have H query heads, as shown here, but we use a single shared key and a single shared value head. Then we calculate the dot product of all these queries with the same shared key matrix, so we get H different products of QK transpose. And then each of those QK transpose products are scaled as in the original transformer paper. Next, we compute the output head as the softmax of the scaled QK transpose multiplied by the shared value matrix V. And finally, we concatenate the results to get the output of the multi-query attention. So how does this attention mechanism compare to the multi-head attention one? The first thing we look at is obviously the computational time. And here, in this table, we depict the TPU V2 time per token in microseconds. As we can see, the multi-query attention is able to achieve a significant speed-up, reducing the time from 203 microseconds to 32 microseconds, so an approximately 7 times speed-up. The next criteria is the performance, for which the authors looked at the perplexity on the billion word language modeling benchmark. And, as you can see here, the multi-query attention obtained just slightly worse results, as its perplexity is a bit higher than the one of the multi-head attention. So, to sum up, what this means is that by replacing the multi-head attention with the multi-query attention, we gain a significant speed-up in computation at the cost of a minor degradation in performance. The next approach that we'll look at is the grouped query attention, which was proposed in 2023 in the paper GQA, Training Generalized Multi-Query Transformer Models from Multi-Head Checkpoints. Here, the authors propose an approach for converting the safe checkpoints of a multi-head transformer to a multi-query transformer for faster inference. But in addition, they also propose the grouped query attention as a new architecture that can control the trade-off between speed and quality by defining a subgroup of queries and using a single share key and a single share value in each subgroup. So, let's see how that works in more detail and let's imagine that we have H heads and H divided by two subgroups. Then, what this means is that for each subgroup, we have two queries, one shared key, and one shared value. The calculation inside each subgroup are done in a similar way as in the case of multi-query attention. We compute the dot product of each query with a single key of the same subgroup, so we get H QK transpose vectors. Then we rescale them, apply the softmax function, and multiply the results with the V shared matrix of that subgroup. 
and in the end we get again h outputs that are concatenated to generate the final result. Now let's put these three methods side by side and let's compare them. So we have the same number of queries in all three cases, h, but a different number of keys and values. In the multi-head attention, we have a key and a value for each head. In the multi-query attention, we have a single share key and value matrix. And in the group query attention, we divide the heads into subgroups and use a single share key and value matrix in that subgroup. If you were to set the number of subgroups to be equal to 1, then the group query attention would be identical to the multi-query attention. And if we were to set the number of groups to be equal to H, the group query attention would be identical to the multi-head attention. Now, let's compare the performance of these methods. This figure shows the performance versus time for all these methods. And what can be observed from it is that while the multi-head attention has the best performance, it's also the slowest method. The multi-query attention is both the fastest and the worst performing method, and the grouped query attention manages to achieve a similar speed up as the multi-query attention, while the degradation in quality is insignificant. Finally, let's get an idea of how many subgroups we want to create. This figure shows a case with 64 total number of heads, and the grouped query attention can go from 1 that is again identical to the multi-query attention, all the way to the maximum number of subgroups, which would be identical to the multi-head attention. As we can see here, going from 1 up to 8 subgroups does not add significant computation overhead, which can be considered a nice result given that we also don't lose that much in quality. And that's basically how the multi-head, multi-query, and group query attention works. Thanks for watching. And please hit the like button if you enjoyed this explanation. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the content I create on this channel. See you next time. Bye bye.